What's up everybody? Today we're gonna solve the minimum cost path problem. So what's the problem? We start at the upper left corner and our goal is at the bottom right corner. We can either go to the right or go down. And we have to figure out the path that the sum of all of the values on it is minimum. So in this example, we can easily point out that the path is this way. And the minimum sum is 16. So how could we go about solving this problem? So first, we have to calculate the minimum sum for each cell. Let's consider a smaller puzzle. Here we start at the upper left corner and there is no cells preceded, so we just keep it as it is. Let's move on to the second one which is the cell of value number 5. And there is only one cell preceded, which is 1, so we just go ahead and add up those values and get 6. We will do the same thing for the cell at the bottom left corner. We will get 4, which is 3 plus 1. And now we get to our goal. And there are 2 cells preceded, which is 4 and 6. So we have to compare those values and choose the smaller one, which is 4. So go ahead and add up 4 to 2, we get 6. And we can check the answer by going back to our original puzzle. We can see that obviously the path 1, 3, 2 will give us the minimum sum which is 6. And yes, it is indeed our answer. So we can repeat this process for a larger puzzle and get the sum table like this. Before moving to the next step, let's go ahead and implement this one. There are many ways to implement the solution. The iteration one is very straightforward, so I will put it on my GitHub account along with the C++ and Python files. Now I will show you the recursive one in Java. First create a 2D integer array for the puzzle and another 2D integer object array for the sum table. I will explain this later. The constructor will receive the size of the puzzle and initialize the 2D arrays. Let's create a method to generate a random puzzle. Let's call it generate puzzle. We will need a random class, so let's go ahead and import it. That's it. So random rand equal new random. And we will loop through every row in the puzzle. I'm kinda lazy, so I just copy this line and replace row by call. And I will assign a random integer from 1 to 20 to the current cell. I don't want it to be too big. And don't forget to call it. Now let's go ahead and create a method to calculate the minimum sum for each cell. Accept a row and a column. Our base case is the upper left cell at which the row and the column are both 0. And we just simply return the value at the current cell in the puzzle. If not, we will calculate the left sum and the upper sum. So first, just initialize those values to be the maximum integers. If call greater than 0, meaning there's a cell on the left, so go ahead and wrap the sum. Same thing for the row, if it's greater than 0, meaning there's a cell above it. So the sum of the current cell is equal whatever value is smaller plus the current value in the puzzle. We just simply return the sum. Next, we're gonna do something called dynamic programming, which just simply prevents repeated calculations. Remember we use integer objects for the sum that way we can check whether or not the sum at the current cell is equal to null. If not, we just simply return the sum and do not do any calculations. And we will call the method from our goal, which is as position size minus 1, size minus 1. This method will recursively calculate the sum of all of the cells before it. Now, let's figure out the minimum path of this one. We will use a stack to store all the cells, particularly their positions. So first, we started at the bottom right corner, which is our goal. So let's go ahead and push its position onto the stack. Then we have two choices, one cell on the left and one cell above it. We have to compare those values and choose the smaller one, which is 12. So now push its positions 1, 2 onto the stack. 
and we will repeat this process until we reach our upper left corner, which is where we started. Now let's go back to our original puzzle. Here we use a stack to store our positions, so when we pop out those values, they will be in reverse order, which is the correct order that we want. So let's go ahead and pop the first one, which is where we started. Then 3, 2, 6, 4. That's it, and this is indeed the path that we want. So let's go ahead and implement this one. We will need a stack, so just go ahead and import it from java.util and create a private stack of type integer array. Let's call it path. And don't forget to create a new object. Then we will need a method to return the sum of the current cell. The purpose of this method is to check whether or not the current cell is valid. So if row is less than 0 or call is less than 0, or the sum of the current cell is no. Because our calculate means some method may not cover the whole puzzle. In that case, we will return the maximum integers. If not, we just simply return the sum of the current cell. Now let's get into our mock path function. This is a recursive one which receives the row and the column of the current cell. And whenever we get to the cell, we just go ahead and push it to our path. If the current cell is where we started, in which the row and the column are both zeros, we just return and do nothing. If not, we will compare the left sum and the upper sum. And whatever value is smaller, we will go and mark the cell as path. And don't forget to call it from our goal. Now we can relax and create some getters. For the get path method, remember to only return the copy of the path. We don't want to destroy our original path when popping out the cells. And create a method to print the path. First, we have to get the path. Then create an integer array to store the current cell. So if the cell's position is equal to the current cell in the path, we will go ahead and print that out. And assign the next cell in the path to current. Else, we will print nothing. And remember to add a new line at the end of a row. And let's write another method to print the puzzle as well. We get a little warning here, so let's go ahead and fix it. Just add suppress warnings unchecked, and the warning will be gone. Now let's create another class to run the program. Let's call it tester. We will need a scanner to get the input from the user. New scanner system in. And we will ask the user to enter the size of the puzzle. And assign it into an integer variable. Now let's create a mean path solver with the input size. 
and just print out the puzzle. And the path as well. And don't forget to close the scanner. Let's compile and run the program. Let's size the size of 4. Ta da! Here we go. The path seems right. I have created a GUI version for this program as well. It looks like this. Let's say it's the size of 5 starts and we have to guess the minimum sum. Let's say 50. Oh, it's wrong. I don't think I can solve this one. Let's try another one. Let's say 3. I think the path should be 7, 9, 2, 19, and 5, which is 42. Yes, I was right. You can find the source code of this one in my GitHub repository as well. That's pretty much for this video. Stay tuned and see you in the next one.